fascism, pandering, anti-Semitism. Will they ever end? Hi everybody and welcome to my vlog, We Are One, which has its roots in my blog, which I started in 2016, called We Are One as well. It looks at the uh, events today and echoes of the past from the 1930s and the Second World War. And unfortunately, there was a very loud echo uh, this past weekend when uh, we were uh, exposed to remarks by the former General Michael Flynn, a convicted felon pardoned by former President Donald Trump, who is now going around the country saying things like, uh, we are one country under God and that we must have one religion. Well, last I checked, this was a country where people of all faiths were able to worship freely. Here's what he said. And, he, and they're talking about the United States of America. Talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible, he wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one, one, one nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together. We have to have one nation under one religion. Who is we? And what was the response to this statement? There is a young man from Ohio named Josh Mandel, who is the grandchild of Holocaust survivors. And he immediately responded by saying, we stand with Michael Flynn. He is uh, one of the Republican favorites to run for senator in Ohio. And I guess he thought that he would pander to the Republican base with a comment like that. But Josh Mandel has a record of saying all kinds of peculiar things. He, in the face of the government trying to encourage people to wear masks and be vaccinated against COVID, actually said that the US government was using Gestapo-like tactics. What does that mean? He is equating the Gestapo and its role in genocide with a government that is trying to save lives by encouraging people to protect themselves using masks. I mean, what kind of a society are we if people can say such things cavalierly without any regard for the implications, the very deep implications for their meaning? Uh, this, uh, uh, <laughs> Last weekend, on the very day that Flynn made his remarks and Mandel responded, there were reports of Polish protests in a community that is called Kalic, 120 miles from Warsaw, uh, on the day that com commemorates the unification of Poland in 1918. And they burned books to symbolize an edict from the 13th century that proclaimed equal rights for Jews. They made the point that by, uh, by ch chanting death to Jews in Poland, which as we know is so heavily populated today with Jews. Why does this matter to me? Behind me, is a portrait of my great-grandmother, Sarah Levy Finkelstein, who fled Berlin in the fall of 1940 for Lisbon with my great-grandfather, Heinrich Finkelstein, and sailed two months later in February of 1941 from Lisbon to New York. They lost two of their four children in World War II. One of them was my grandmother, Teofila, the mother of my mother. We see 
a rise of authoritarianism worldwide and worst of all in the place that my great-grandparents and my parents after World War II considered the greatest haven on earth. How do we respond to remarks like the ones I've reported to you? How do we combat such distortions of the truth? I would love to hear from you if you have ideas. So please email me at kfrankel at nyc.rr.com. That's K-F-R-E-N-K-E-L at nyc.rr.com. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to hearing from you.